Morris. On Tuesday, the team has already had their first training session with all 25 players involved in the session. Chris Hutton believes his team can get better with their first half performances after the 1-0 victory over, uh, that is, um, the Madagascar last Friday. Oh, I think um, I, I, I'll, I'll put it down to us. Our performance wasn't good enough. Um, you know, a lot of people have made references regards to two uh, defensive midfield players. We were we were able to change that. Um, but um, when Ashimiru come on, this is a, a player that that has not played in the first team for three months. He's had a big injury, was out for a long period of time. So the thinking was is that, that I think we could use him in the second half if we needed to make changes and so um, but as regards to two defensive midfield players it's about it's about how you try to position and what we tried to do was for, for them to not to play on the same level to particularly Salis to play just that, that little bit higher uh, but you need good rhythm in your passing and we probably didn't have good enough rhythm in our passing in that period Chris Hutton there. Now Iñaki Williams managed to score his first goal for Ghana last Friday against Madagascar. My colleague Rick Krampoff believes this is good for his confidence and could open up the way for more goals. Thinking his first goal would be scrappy, a penalty, something to get his confidence up. But what, what a goal it was. Brilliant header. I'm just hoping that it's, it opens more doors for him with the gas to the Black Stars. And now he feels more at ease and at home. And uh, you know, finally does something good, like what he's been doing in Spain in the past few years. I've always said that he's one of the most technical players in the team, and I think we saw a bit of that uh, looking at his overall gameplay against Madagascar. So that is from Ori Kwampo for on Iñaki Williams, staying with the Africa World Cup qualifiers. Former Black Stars coach Kwesia Pia, who is at the helm of the Sudanese national football team, steered his court to victory against the formidable DR Congo side. The match held in the Bazin Stadium field with anticipation marked a significant milestone for Pia and his coaching career with the Sudan national team. A 1 0 victory it was for them. Well, don't forget, he's supported by Ghanaian assistants Ignatius Oseifusu and Fatau. Dauda. So after the game, you could see them applauding the fans and then very happy having the first victory of the qualifying campaign. After two games, Kwesiapia and his technical team have four points in there. Now moving on, Nigeria suffered a second setback in four days to their hopes of competing at the 2026 World Cup qualifying uh, campaign with a 1-1 draw against Zimbabwe on Sunday. Walter Musona scored a free kick uh, to put Zimbabwe ahead in the first half before Kelly Chinhe Nyacho equalized for Nigeria. Last Thursday, Nigeria also had to come from behind to draw one all at home against Lesotho, the lowest rank of the six Group C team. So very unfortunately for the Super Green Eagles. So if you're watching us on Facebook, that was a goal conceded by Francis Uzo. Nigeria's goalkeepers never get better. Now staying with the results from the um, World Cup qualifying campaign for Africa, Burundi were defeated two goals to one by Gabon. Algeria traveled to Mozambique to defeat them by two goals to nil. There was another victory for, uh, that is, Egypt to defeat in Sierra Leone by two goals to nil. And just like I said earlier, Sudan, Defeating the Democratic Republic of Congo by one goal to nil. Matches coming up Djibouti against Guinea Bissau, Trey against Congo, Ivory Coast against Gambia, Liberia host Equatorial Guinea, Kenya travel to Seychelles, Chad play against Madagascar, and Mali against the Central Africa Republic. These are matches coming up today. Now let's drop to the Ghana Premier League and in Swatchema Football Club head coach Maxwell Knudu was rushed to the hospital on Sunday evening for medical attention after he was attacked by some fans of. Tano Bofuakwa. Let's hear from the report of Inswatraman's general manager, Eric Alagidede, uh, who spoke about the assault on Maxwell Kunedu. Eric. Result for the end of the game after 90 minutes when the game had actually ended 0 0. The policeman on duty, I must say, I don't know how it happened, but the inner perimeter was, was forced open. And all the fans trooped into the inner perimeter. Whilst my players and my coaches were rushing to go through the tunnel and go and enter into the dressing room, they were actually looking for the referees to attack. And someone hit Coach Maxwell Konadu with an object. And he went down unconscious. So um, he was rushed to the dressing room. He was unconscious. They tried, and then uh, the ambulance service came in. They tried and revived him from there. And I walked in and then we, we asked that 
he'll be taken to the hospital. So the ambulance actually came in. When we took him into the ambulance, I think he went off again. So clearly, they drove him to the Sunyani Regional Hospital, and uh, he was admitted. So we were still locked up in the stadium. I was trying to, louvers were broken here and there. Hell was loose all over because the fans were all over the place but Eric, trying to enter into the dressing rooms. Okay, but what, what I want to understand is we had drawn, we had gotten a point and we were excited going back home. So what, what, would we, what would be our business in the inner perimeter in the first place? We have no business there. My fans had gone, they were even going up to their board, their buses and return. So clearly, they were looking for the refugees, and I don't know which was actually rushing to go into the inner perimeter because the way and manner the gates were open for the fans to go into the inner perimeter, I, I didn't understand it. So clearly, someone took advantage and, and just hit him with an object, and, and he went off. Well, very unfortunate there for Max Oknodo. As a stand now, the coach hasn't been revived. Well, they said he came conscious around 10 p.m., but he went off just after two hours and is still unconscious. We'll get more updates and video later on. Now to the result from the Ghana Premier League match week 11. Asante Kotoko defeated Media Messi by a goal to nil. Brecum Chelsea won leg on City's nil. Nations FC traveled to beat BBN Gold Stars by a goal to nil. And there was a goalless draw between before Quartano and then Ains Swatch Emmanuel, a one all draw, uh, I should say. And then RTU defeated Dreams FC by three goals to one. Let's have a quick listen to our Sante Kotoko assistant coach David Dixon Oklo after their win over the champions. That is a hard time, but my boys are mentally prepared for this particular game. And you can see it in the game. It's unfortunate we couldn't kill the match in the first 15 minutes, but it's a process. Gradually, it will come, the goals will come. In, in, in game, normally, when you are a goal up, the opponents have that extra energy to push. And that is what happened. But we were able to manage the game and we came out victorious. They came out victorious last Saturday. Karela United recorded a 2-1 victory over Ediana FC. Shai Butanko is the head coach for Karela. Was a very pleased man. It's great, except that uh, we still have more work to do in order to, I mean, uh, to continue winning until the league is over. Uh, the, the two goals were the moments that defined the, the match, so we are content with it. Easy to to have beaten such a, a wonderful club. They are a good side. They played. I've never experienced this sort of uh, play against us before. This is the first time I told the coach that uh, he has a good team, but we we'll also fortify our team next time we are meeting them because, I mean, knowing them gives me impression as to how to play them. That is from uh, that is Shai Butanko now. Yeah, we're champion. He's Adriana FC coach was not pleased with decisions from the match officials. Yeah, I think it was a very nice game, especially with them having one of the best coaches in the country. Uh, playing them, I think they play well in the first half, and then the second half we also push a little bit to see if we can we can equalize. But the two goals that they disallow. I'm not clear with the two goals, so I have to go home and then look at the, the video well, and then I can give a comments about it. I don't normally talk about officiating, but I think uh, uh, he went offline sometimes, so I have to, I think, rehat because we are also human. If you see something and it's not going well, I think you will react. So that's why you see me in action. The Yahweh champion there now to Christopher Henning, coach for Brickham Chelsea. Well, he managed to get a home win, but he's still frustrated at how the fans always complain about situations not going right. He explains why after the 1 0 victory. Missing a penalty, scoring to it, it really uh, bring the confidence down. But uh, finally, we made it. I'm really getting upset with, with, with the fans. Because it started last season. I won almost all my home games and the away was not coming. They started complaining. Coach cannot win away. Now started winning away, we struggled at home, they are complaining. So just imagine. I only need how to forget about them and focus and get my three points. Because it, it, it doesn't matter whether you play ugly and get your points. The way man I will play home and away and get my points is what I'm going to focus now on the team. That is from uh, Christopher and in there. Now to the Black Princesses and they have qualified to the final round of the 2024 World Cup and are 20 qualifiers after a 2 0 win over Swatini at their Craspo Stadium, sealing an 8 1 aggregate triumph over their opponents. Here is head coach Yusuf Basigi after the game. I don't know what happened. We had a league and then we followed up. They thought that we're going to, I mean, win massively. 
So because of that, complacency set, I made them aware two zero in the first half was not good enough. Even though we had qualified already, even before coming here, but we knew they were not coming to or threaten us. We needed to make Ghanaians happy. We needed to impress for Ghanaians to be happy because. Yes, they enjoy entertainment football, but uh, they, today I myself wasn't too happy or they didn't entertain Ghanaians. Tomorrow, Melody Sundowns, ladies and the other champions of Africa again after cruising to a 3 0 win over Sporting Club Casablanca in the final of the CAF Women's Champions League. A bridge from Refill Way to Lakele and a strike from Bitumelo Rabali was in half as the South African Giants reclaimed the title. Now, Ghana Women's Premier League champions Ampem Dakwan ladies lost out on third place after a 2 0 loss to AS Farabat in the bronze medal match of the 2023 CAF Women's Champions League. Former faith ladies attacker Mephi Nyame and Gisela Shebak scored the goals for the North African side. Now moving on to the Euro 2024 qualifiers. It's going to be a big battle between Ukraine and defending champions Italy who are vying for one of the five Euro 2024 tickets on the final match day of the qualifiers when they face each other in the tournament host country of Germany. Coming off a 5-2 win over North Macedonia on Friday, Italy need only a draw in Leverkusen to qualify. So you look at the table, Italy are second on 13 points. Ukraine follow with 13 points. Now Italy overcame some nerves with a win against North Macedonia and uh, there could be more jitters today as the Azuri will be under pressure not to miss a second straight big tournament. Now, very unfortunate news coming in for FC Barcelona as their midfielder Gavi had to limp off the pitch with a serious knee injury in Sunday's Euro 2024 qualifier against Georgia. The 19-year-old was tackled from behind, buckling the knee that had his weight on it before leaving the pitch in tears. It's a serious injury to his knee, but we need to see how bad it is actually the Spanish Football Federation review. Now, uh, some results from the Euro 2024 qualifiers Bruno Fernandes and Ricardo Horta net at the goals for uh, Roberto Martinez, Portugal, with Cristiano Ronaldo not on the score sheet to end with 10 wins from 10 matches in Group J. Slovakia finished eight points behind Portugal in their second qualifying place after a 2 1 win over Bosnia and Herzegovina. Now, Luxembourg, who will head into the playoffs where a further five points are drift after closing out an impressive group stage showing with a 1-0 success in Liechtenstein. Now the Serbians will finish second in Group G behind Hungary who snuffed out any hopes Montenegro had of progressing by defeating them three goals to one in Budapest. The other matches coming up today, Ukraine against Italy, North Macedonia against England, the Czech Republic against Moldova, Albania against Faroe Islands, Denmark play against Northern Ireland, Slovenia against Kazakhstan, and then San Marino against Finland. Now, this morning, the under 17 World Cup enters into the knockout phase, and in the round of 16, Ecuador play against Brazil, they Spain against Japan. The first game is at 8 30 between Ecuador against Brazil, and then Spain play against Japan at 12 midday. Let's uh, get into some boxing news. And Isaac, the Royal Storm Dobe's attempt to get a shot at the WBC featherweight title, suffered a head following his defeat to Nick Ball in the final eliminator in Manchester. Dobe suffered a unanimous defeat after all three judges scored in favor of Ball 116. 111, 118, 109, and 119, 108. The Ghanaian fight was eyeing an opportunity to fight Ray Vargas, who currently holds the title, and he's yet to defend the belt since his victory over Mark Maxayo in July 2022. This means Ball stands the chance of facing Vargas while Derby, who has now lost four fights, seeks to find his way back to fighting the best in his division. Now, finishing off with some tennis news, Novak Djokovic won a record-breaking 7th ATP Finals title on Sunday after beating local hero Janik Sena 6-3, 6-3, in Turin. Now world number one, Djokovic moves clear of retired great Roger Federer in victories at the season-ending tournament after denying Italian Senna a triumph on home soil. So that is some great news coming in from Novak Djokovic there. That'll be all for sports this morning. My name is Kelvin Oswan. Some mega sex low to six numbers can't change your life. They helped us to bring you the very best and the latest in the world of sports well um johnny hughes um is i know johnny johnny has been 
asking about the black stars things haven't been fine chris Hutin getting a result and hopefully ghana looking forward to getting a very successful mm. world cup campaign johnny at least <sighs> we won the first game and we can we, look we, forward we, to the second we, game we tomorrow. won it um in a very tiring manner yeah um I, I couldn't believe and i was telling six twos and uh, Mr. Massive and Janet and all the people who watched me that look, I couldn't believe that we were playing Madagascar <laughs> and it took us forever <laughs> to score a goal. I couldn't, this is the Black Stars. Yeah, three time our, champions of I mean, Our brothers from Umofia haven't ah, had a victory. No, no, no. I said, our brothers from Umofia. Yeah, but, I mean, that is them. I'm talking about three times African champions yeah. and we were struggling. We, we are four times. Four. Yeah, four. Yeah. We struggled. Right? Yeah, so we did. We did struggle. We struggled. Yeah. So when you, you see, we couldn't even jubilate because the players said, go now back. Because yeah. Charlie, we, they just escaped it by the, the skin of the teeth. Exactly. I think Chris Hutton <sighs> has a lot to do. You no, know, he has plenty I, to I, do. I, I, I don't understand why he has progressive players, but decides to be very conservative. You know, I always say you cannot stay meticulous married. France have qualified already. You yeah. see how they, they destroyed Gibraltar by 14 goals to nail. On Saturday, Are you 14. Me? So, so we're struggling to score Madagascar. 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 Which is on the outskirts of... You know, Boston. tomorrow's game, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> even worried. Because this, this same Comoros... No, no, I won't, I won't Comoros make a, pro, uh, you know, uh, 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 a prediction because... Um, <laughs> you don't want any trouble yeah, yeah, for yeah. yourself. They embarrassed me the other time. <laughs> I mean, they won, yes, but Madagascar. It's sad. Hopefully we have some very good turnout tomorrow Oma, Omada, in Moroni. Ska. Eh? Eh? Madagascar. <laughs> Madaskata. That will be almost worse. This one in Sunrise continues with Johnny Hughes and the rest of the team. Tomorrow we are playing against Comoros and uh, that game is after midday. Let's, let me quickly get the time and some other results. So the team had their first training session and we just hope that tomorrow will be another good day for the Black Stars of Ghana. So um, the kickoff time for tomorrow's game is at, um, that is, uh, well, let me get it for you, 4 p.m., yes, 4 p.m., the same time we play the first game here in Kumase, the Barbara Sports Stadium. So 4 p.m. is the time for the game Ghana against Comoros. So in Moroni, the Black Stars can make us proud. That'll be all for Sports Sunrise continues. Johnny Hughes and the rest of the team take over.